So hello guys, I am Neil Vardaria from IIT Patna and today I am going to talk about the graphene and its band structure. So talking about graphene, it is a very special uh, structure because it is a 2D material. That is to say that it only is a one flat thin layer of carbon atoms. Now how is actually graphene made? So well if you know that uh, pencils have a graphite lead so what uh, is done is that you can take a scotch tape or cello tape and peel layer by layer and you will be able to get a 2D layer which is a graphene. Now graphene is highly studied material because of its excellent electrical conductivity. also has an excellent thermal conductivity and it is also known for its high tensile strength now to understand what makes graphene so special we'll have to go through and study its band structure so before moving forward what is band structure so band structure is band structure of graphene or band structure in general is a plot of energy versus the wave vector k which tells us uh, about the different bands like the valence band or conduction bands which are present in a atom or a molecule so now look at this uh, lattice hexagonal lattice which is shown here what you would see that this lattice is quite different from the regular lattices of cubic or rectangular crystals that we have seen because the basis points are not at a 90 degree angle with each other or they are not exactly perpendicular. So now uh, this is the basis of uh, graphene in a real space. Now to understand graphene we need to first draw its first Brillouin zone and to do that we actually draw its reciprocal lattice. So the reciprocal lattice can be drawn by considering a perpendicular to reciprocal of this vector b star and similarly a reciprocal to the vector a which could be a star now these two vectors in the reciprocal space would be somewhat like these so now to draw a Brillouin zone we need we know that we need to select one of the points and see which points are the closest to these points this gives us six candidates now our uh, Brillouin zone would be the planes which bisect the lines joining these points in a perpendicular fashion. Doing so would also give us a reciprocal Brillouin zone which is very unique and not seen in cubic crystals. So this Brillouin zone uh, is what we should be is also hexagonal and it is uh, should we should keep it shape in mind while discussing the band structure of graphene. So now we come to the structure of graphene once again. So as you can know that there are, uh, if you look at the hexagonal structure, you will find that even though it is a periodic and a repetitive structure, it is not a Bravais lattice. So for sake of mathematics, we divide it into two sub lattices, one which is shown by the blue color and another which is shown by the red color, both of which may uh, form a triangular lattice. Uh, and these two sub lattices could be used for our mathematics. In a regular uh, graphene, this could be denoted as site A and site B, and the angle between each of the edges is 120 degree. So now here I have marked some points in a single gra graphene hexagon, which uh, are of interest to us. They have been named K, K prime, H, lambda, sigma, and tau. We will come to these points when we discuss the band structure of graphene. So now, before discussing the band structure, we should know how do we actually obtain that band structure. While not going too much into the mathematics, to say briefly, uh, the band structure of graphene comes by solving the tight binding model. So what is actually tight binding model? It is a model in which we consider the ions or the constituents to be closely packed uh, near to one another and hence the term tight binding 
so this gives us an interaction Hamiltonian h which is t sum of these two operators a i and b j now a i dagger is a di uh, destructive uh, operator and b j is a creative operator these uh, uh, correspond to the sides a and b which i had shown earlier so on operating this uh, from this hamiltonian for our graphene we can obtain the energy value using the tight binding model which gives us this equation well this equation would tell us what actually our uh, band structure would look like so here there are three key parameters the t which is also found in the hamiltonian or it is a hopping parameter it tells us about the likeliness of the electron hopping from site A to site B and so on and so forth and this could be also be represented in this form in which case we have two parameters FAA and FBB where FAA de deals with the interactions at sites A with site A and FBB would deal with the interactions with sites B so now as you can see in this that they have KX, KY which are a function which uh, say that energy is a function of two variables kx and ky so a tight binding model actually gives us a result of a potential which looks somewhat like this so if you can see closely there are uh, there are two surfaces in this potential the upper one and the lower one so the upper one is our valence band and the lower one is our conduction band as you can see here there are one two three four five and six places where these bands come in contact with each other. These places are the same to the where the atoms were in the reciprocal lattice. Now as you might have already guessed uh, that uh, for graphene it acts actually like semi-metal. It's not a semiconductor or nor is it a full conductor but it is rather uh, specified as a semi-metal. The reason being is that it acts as a metal at the six points in space while at other points it has a gap between the two bands now this gap varies based on the direction at which we observe graphene and also at the points through which uh, we are passing through so before uh, so we can say that graphene has acquired directional properties it has also been observed that graphene is in a hexagonal lattice like this graphene is conducting if the electrons or the path of electricity follows a zigzag fashion but it is not conducting if the direction is as such or where the lattices are come into pairs of two so uh, this also shows that it has six different directions at which it would be conducting which would be the pairs of the two atoms of the uh, graphene structure so now what happens if, if we tweak the parameters T, F, F, A, F, A and F, B, B. This T is our hopping parameter which uh, and the hopping of electrons is what leads to conduction in graphene. So any change in T greater than 1 would actually create a band gap at these places and would make graphene a semiconductor. While change in F, A, A and F, B, B would actually uh, defer the sharpness of these peaks. If you see uh, in this plot, the FFA value is higher than FBB, leading to a stronger sharp in the lower band compared to a, a mild peak in the upper band. So this sharp peak is result of an in increased value of FBB and FFA. So now we come to uh, the most important part. What makes this band structure so unique? Well, if you compare this, to the shape of graphene you can see that there are six points where we have a cone like structure now if you gen if we generally talk about any of the molecules or atoms uh, we know that it band structure is of a paraboloid forming a parabola uh, which shows the conduction band and the valence band now instead we have a conical area for the graphene atoms so what does it actually mean well we know that the energy equations are generally uh, parabola and of the form say kinetic energy is half mv square but here you can see that this relation is rather linear or more like E is equal to PV or PC 
so it rather sees uh, indicates that the charge carrier here or in this case is a massless quantity or an particle which does not have mass so well it could mean that effective mass of an electron in a graphene is zero which is a quite surprising result in itself now let's talk about the directional properties of graphene so let's come back to this figure and so if I splice this perpendicular in a manner at a point where these uh, bands meet I would get a graph which is this kind however if I choose a site which is between these two points which was earlier referred to as a K point we would have something which is like this the band gaps uh, that would be a band gap between the two points and as it is a K region it would look more like two concave region now for different different angles in which we splice this graph we'll get a different conic section so just as we can splice a cone we can do the same for graphene but splicing it can give us different values of potentials for some of them the band gap would be so large that it in some direction it would act as a metal for some of them the band gap is so large that it is a non-metal for some it is a semiconductor style and when we cut this conic section in half or the direction which cuts this conic section in half would give us a conductivity like metal metal now just tweaking the T a little would actually give us a singularity at this point this also has some profound implications diamagnetism in the graphene and also uh, is the cause of the quantum hall effect however discussing those phenomena would be beyond the scope of this video so thank you